G'day, welcome to this video about Matthew 5 verse 20 and the rest of the chapter. Um, I've kind of laid it out here. Um, what I'll be showing you is uh, verse 20 kind of sets up this pattern that we see in the rest of the chapter. So verse 20 talks about these two different righteousnesses and what follows is these six pairs of statements both pairs uh, um, each pair mentions well both righteousnesses so we've got well I'll just read verse 20 for I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven so this next statement is going to be a, a description of well one element of the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees that is the righteousness which was taught by the scribes and Pharisees. Verse 21. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. Verse 22. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. So see how that's that righteousness is one which exceeds the state well the righteousness of the statement which he just mentioned that's he's telling us the righteousness which exceeds that of the scribes and the pharisees and as you can see as the chapter continues there's um it, it continues to take on that pattern verse 27 there's another statement you have heard that it was said to those of old you shall not commit adultery so that again is the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. But again, Jesus follows that by giving you a righteousness which exceeds that. Um, yeah, so that's all that's happening. He's giving us the law we need to live by if we want to enter the kingdom of heaven, as he puts it. But um, the devil comes in and teaches all kinds of foolishness and um, I'll give you an example of that. But first off, I'll just show you that there are the, the six pairs of statements. So we've got verse 21 to verse 26, 27 to 30, 31 to 32, 33 to 37, 38 to 42, and 43 through to the end of the chapter. So that's your six pairs of statements there. Uh, really, really basic, but um, of course it doesn't fit with the false doctrine of justification by faith alone. This is saying that you need to um, kind of keep yourself above a bar. You need, like, here's perfection, and here's where God is willing to forgive you. You need to live in that holiness. But what the devil does is he says, "Oh no, no." You can never be righteous enough. And the key to that is that now the standard of righteousness you need to be at is always above you. So it's never below you. So you never need to worry about how far you fall. So you can be up here or down here. It doesn't matter. That's his silly little trick. Mate, it's a false doctrine. The Bible says you can and must live in holiness if you want to abide in God's forgiveness. And those who are willing to come out of sin into it will have the knowledge of God, the fear of God. And if they've got any common sense at all, they'll be able to see in the Bible these warnings saying that if you fall out of that holiness, you can fall into a debased mind where you'll no longer fear God. You'll no longer see the point in repenting. You'll be back in damnation, but you won't know it. But they've got their silly doctrines of justification by faith alone and all this other garbage. So let's go look at um, some of these people. Here's a guy that's fully sold out to faith alone. Man, this guy is totally deluded. He's, um, he's a great example of a damned false convert. Hey guys, quick video explaining Matthew chapter 5 verse 20. The Bible says this. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is raising the bar of righteousness. 
And he warns that except our righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, we will in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, what righteousness is he referring to? Is he speaking of my own personal righteousness, which is of the law, my righteous actions and deeds and works? Is Jesus saying that I have to live a more righteous life than the scribes and Pharisees if I want to be saved and go to heaven? No. Jesus is not speaking of a righteousness which is of the law. Jesus is speaking of a... Man, Jesus is teaching a law. There's two laws. The law of Moses, which guided the nation of Israel, that was in the first covenant, and the law of Christ in the second covenant. But they don't like that. They don't see two laws. They just see these statements about how there's no justification through the works of the law. And so they throw all requirements to depart from evil out using those statements. And it's the devil who's doing it. Righteousness which is of faith. A righteousness which is of... A righteousness which is of the faith. That is the second covenant. Christianity, the faith. It's upon all who believe and all who obey the law of Christ. Both statements are in the scripture. And um, of course, you won't believe that you have to obey unless you actually believe. You see, the irony is that these guys will say things like, oh, I'm, I'm so unrighteous. I could never point to any works that I've done. All I bring to the plate is faith. I'll, at the judgment, I'll just be pointing to my faith. Mate, they don't even have faith. They believe in a false Christ, a false God, a false version of Christ. But, um, yeah. They're stuck in that. Some of them are actually saved. The way to tell a saved person from a damned person is whether they obey or not. That's what the Bible says. To me, anyway. By this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, those who say I know him and don't keep his commandments are liars and the truth is not in them. I'd say this guy is in the second category, but I don't know him personally. But um, I think that's where he's at. God. The Bible says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the... Yeah, so all that's saying is, it's by forgiveness. You know, if it's by forgiveness, obviously it's not that we were like so grand and righteous, is it? Like... And, and that's what excludes boasting. The fact that it's by forgiveness means it's by grace, and that excludes boasting. It means it's not of our works. It's of God's forgiveness. But the flip side is that the forgiveness is of repentance, which is works, essentially. That's why the Bible says it's not of works, and that it is by works. Because in one sense it's not of works, and in another sense it is. These guys don't have that in their doctrine. They just have little shards of Bible, little pieces of Bible, and they just use them to construct doctrine. And they end up with some crazy garbage saying that if you believe that you don't have to obey, God will transfer Christ's obedience to the law to your account. It's their use of Romans 4 verse 5 and their doctrine of imputed righteousness. It's zany, mate. They are on another planet washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that he... Yeah, so again, like all that's saying is, it's by God washing us, God redeeming us, God forgiving us, God making us righteous. The righteousness is from God having mercy on us rather than us just standing there going, oh, look how righteous I am. Like, even when you're transformed through the power of the Spirit, you can't boast... Because it's God who enabled you to do that, you know? But, um, yeah, the devil just takes whatever bits of Bible he can and go and study their misuse of Scripture, man. They are, they're crazy. He became sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You say, what righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes? The one which he taught. And Pharisees, the righteousness of God, the righteousness which is of faith. And we receive that righteousness 
upon the moment of salvation by placing our full faith, full trust, full belief in the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah, so they change it from believe in Christ, which is in the Bible dozens of times, to believe in what Christ did for us. You know, believe in the finished work of Saviour Jesus. Now, it says believe in Jesus, as in believe that Jesus was the coming Messiah, the one who had the message of God, teaching the truth of God. So if he says forgive or you won't be forgiven, then you better do that. If you believe in Christ, that's what you'll be living by. These guys believe in a false Christ. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Yeah, so this is one of, um, oh, actually it's, I was going to say it's one of six statements. It's actually a seventh one. There's six statements in the Bible that say it's not of works. And every time it says it's not of works, it also says it's by grace. So I forget what they all are. I mean, you've got Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9. Um, what are the other ones? Oh, there's one in 1 Timothy 1 verse 9. I think it was 2 Timothy 1 verse 9. Um, oh, I've got a PDF with them. Oh, I'm a bit rusty because I haven't been focused on theology lately. But this is giving the same message but using different terms. And be found in him not having my own righteousness. So not having a righteousness which is of myself where I could boast, which is of the law of Moses but that which is through the faith of Christ, that is the covenant of Christ, Christianity, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So because God sent Christ to die for our sins in the new covenant, that really identifies us as people who needed forgiveness. And God's the one who's providing the atonement and the mercy. It really humbles us. Totally different concept to being righteous, through the law of Moses. The law of Moses, you atoned for your own sin. And um, yeah, it didn't really abase the person. Totally different concept. And that's what Paul is pointing out. He's proving that when you analyze the Old Testament scripture, it can't be that being in the first covenant made you a child of Abraham, made you justified. Um, but it can be that instead all who believe and who depart from evil are the children of Abraham. And that was important in the first century. It's not really important today because everyone knows you don't have to be a, well, most people, some people think still think being a Jew is worth something. But Paul is not only claiming but proving that being a Jew had always been worthless for justification. Never made you a child of God. Just put you in the nation that God was using to bring about the Messiah, which was to be for the whole world. Um, but yeah, so these faith alone dingbats, they have no idea what Paul was on about. They think he's teaching that it's by faith rather than it being that you need to repent to be forgiven. It's not about that at all. It's about two covenants and how being in the first covenant had always been irrelevant. And he's not only claiming that, like I said, he's proving it with all these technical, analytical proofs. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. If you're not 100%. Yeah, so like I said, their doctrine is that they think that they have Christ's righteousness transferred to them. That's what he's using that verse for. So, um... Yeah, he is by no means the only person preaching that. As you would know if you watch this channel, there's hundreds of them. Hundreds of these faith alone fluff bags.